um, D, uh, it'd be D parenthesis five minus D parenthesis uh, 4.9. I love it. Madi, what do you think the units would be of the numerator D5 minus D4.9? Um, point 0.1. So that would be the answer of 5. Oh, minus shoot. My fault. So what would be the, not, not so much what the answer is in the numerator, but just what are the units? Like what does D5 and D4.9 represent? Um, the distance. Okay. And what were we saying distance was measured in in this case? Uh, I think it was centimeters. Okay. Love it. What is the 5.0 minus 4.9 that you said is 0 0.1? What are the units there? Anybody? Um, oh. Go ahead. Oh. Um, you said what? What are the units for this 0 0.1? Oh, um, I think it's. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, Mr. I have no idea. That's okay. Let's go back and look at the problem statement. Let's everybody read it again. A pendulum hangs from the ceiling. As the pendulum swings, its distance D in centimeters from one wall of the room depends on the number of seconds T since it was set in motion. Assume that the equation for D as a function of T is dot, dot, dot. Now, what does everybody think that 5.0 and 4.9 represent? Uh, is it seconds? Yeah, it's seconds. Very good. That's how we can always find the units for our rate of change. Our units come from the problem. What's D5 minus D4.9? What's the number that goes in the numerator? D point one. What was it? Is it D point one? Nope. Says. We're going to need a number. Remember, when we plugged in D5, we got 95, didn't we? So we'll need to do that same kind of thing that Ariana helped us with. But instead, we're going to use the Y we have in our calculator at 4.9. Has anybody done that math yet? I made sure not to load it in my calculator so I couldn't help you. But if somebody takes a crack at it, I can write it down. Wait, Mister, I think I'm plugging in the um the equation wrong because every time I like do it, I always get like 109 point something. That could be it. Like, if D D5 is 95, it could be 109. Um, but it would seem to me that it might be closer to 95 than that. Can anybody like Ariana? You were able to get 95. What happens when you plug 4.9 into that same function? Um, I got 92.2. Can you hear me? I can. So you're That's saying we've, we've got 95 minus 92.2 all over 5 minus 4.9. Maybe somebody should check Ariana to make sure her 92.2 is right. But if it is. Uh, it's 92.5, not 5.2. Okay. 
So that would mean 95 minus 92.2 might be 2.8 centimeters. 5 minus 4.9 is 0 0.1 seconds. Again, assuming Ariana and Isaiah's numbers are right, what's 2.8 divided by 0 0.1? Come on, guys, you can do this math and you'll get so much more done if you just try it real quick and put your answer out there. Is it 28? 28. And what are our units again, our all important units? Mm, centimeters or uh, centimeter per second. OK, great, Lalo. And that's really just a velocity, isn't it? I wonder if that represents how fast the pendulum is moving away or toward the wall. What do you guys think? And if so, we have to make a decision. Is the pendulum moving away from the wall? Or toward the wall? What kind of number is 28, positive or negative? Morella, what kind of number is 28? Um, positive. Okay. We've said when we have a positive rate that that means something special. Does anybody remember what that means? It's going up. Okay, it would be going up or it would be increasing, wouldn't it? Yeah. But in this case, our pendulum doesn't go up. How does our pendulum go? Sideways, like. Yeah, goes sideways, right? We're either moving to the right or to the left. So in this case, do you think positive represents to the right or to the left? You might think about a number line. To the right. Yeah. Positive rate would mean distance is increasing to the right. And so now that's probably more information than we were asked for for number four. But I bet we can give an approximation of the instantaneous rate of change at t equals five. We would say 28 centimeters per second. second. And as always, I feel like we're just getting warmed up and it's pretty much time to go. But what I want you to do is just look at number five. We didn't finish number four. Do you all know how you would do the part I've highlighted in green? The same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. What's the only difference, Isaiah? This fracture number. Yeah, same, but a different interval. OK. Explain why the exact instantaneous rate of change can't be used. The method you can't be can't use to find number four. Like, why can't we use number four to find the exact IROC? Does anybody know? What would be the time interval if I wanted an exact IROC?
What time would we want? What time do we look like we're looking at here? 4.99 to 5.0. What time are we zeroing in on? What do you think, Moses? Ezra, honestly, I got no idea. I'm still confused on how to even plug this thing into the calculator because I keep getting the wrong answer. Okay, I bet I, I hope you come to office hours then so I can help you. I will. Good, good. Um, we got to go. I have to go teach another <laughs> class, and College View students have to go to another class. But for people that aren't in College View, uh, you might stay on this channel and see if you can't talk through. The answer to number five is we're trying to find an exact IROC at t equals five. That's what instantaneous means. The problem is when I go to plug that in my calculator, I only have one point to choose from because I'm looking only at five, not at 4.999, but right at five. And so I get zero over zero, and that's not possible. So that's what I was looking at for number five. I'm going to sign off, though, because our CV students have to go. Um, but again, like when we do these collaboration times, you, you got to take that risk and say, hey, look, like, could it be this? Could it be that? And once you get an idea out there, then people can comment on it. OK, so next time you could see me today or tomorrow would be his office hours from three to four. Um, good luck working through the rest of this and submit it. Well, it's not really submitted. Just work on it on your student page, and I'll be checking them later this weekend. Okay. You guys have a great, great rest of your day, and I hope to see you in office hours, some of you. Yeah. Bye, guys. Vin, I didn't hear from you today. Should have spoke up. Sorry. It's okay. Good Goodbye, Mr. Efron. Bye, Vin. Have a great day. You too.